In this video we're going to look at annual percentage yield and we will calculate the AP or the APY annual percentage yield for examples eight or five, eight and nine. Draw some conclusions about uh, the difference between APY and APR and how they uh, how they're related and also look at example 10 here. So um, what we're going to do is just have a quick look at examples 5, 8 and 9 and figure out what APY is all by ourselves. So what I want you to do is <coughs> calculate the APY um, sorry an annual percentage yield for these and, and uh, this I, I, what I want you to do is do this for um, just for year one okay just year one nothing else so let's look at example five we invested a thousand dollars at six percent annual compound interest at the end of year one it was a thousand and sixty dollars in there right so what I want you to write down is how much interest was earned um, in year one in example five. How much interest was earned? Sixty dollars, right? So interest um, earned in year one was sixty dollars, okay? Let's look at example eight. What happened in example eight? We invested a thousand dollars at an APR of six percent. And let's just quickly check the uh, example five was also this was six percent APR also. Okay, same APR, compounded annually. So, but example eight was APR of six percent compounded quarterly. Okay. What was the interest earned at the end of year one in example eight? Write it down. The interest earned at the end of year one in example eight was not $15. That was the end of the first quarter or three months, right? What was the interest earned at the end of year one? It was four quarters later, we have one year, okay? And we earned a thousand and sixty one dollars thirty six cents. Now we started with a thousand and then we ended up with this. So what was the interest earned? In example eight. Interest earned in sorry, year one was sixty one dollars and thirty six cents, right? Because we went from a thousand dollars to a thousand sixty-one thirty-six, right? Okay, let's have a look at example nine, and give me the interest earned in year one in example nine. You got it. Here's example nine. Now. What happened in example nine? We invested a thousand dollars at an APR of six percent compounded monthly for four years. But I'm just thinking about the end of year one. How much interest was earned at the end of year one? <coughs> now remember, these are months: one month, two month, three month, and then twelve months was one year. Forty-eight months is four years. And forget about that. But just this one: one year, one year, right? Which is twelve months. We have one thousand and sixty-one dollars and sixty-eight, and we started with a thousand. So the interest earned at the end of year one is sixty-one dollars sixty-eight, right? Okay. So that's the information I wanted you to glean from those. Now, <coughs> here's the thing, though, with these examples, you shouldn't. What what's what's this APR thing? You know because I mean, if you take example five, a thousand dollars, six percent APR, right? Example eight, 
6% APR. Example 9, 6% APR. The APR is the exact same for each of these examples, yet they all give us different interest <coughs> at the end of the year. Isn't that interesting? So for all of these, we have the same APR which is 6%, okay? But for example, 5, remember that this was compounded how often? Example 5 is compounded annually, right? Example 8 was compounded how often? And how often was example 9 compounded? So you can have an APR of 6%, but if it's depending on how often it's compounded, right? Because if you look at example 8, that was compounded quarterly, compounded quarterly, right? If you look at example 9, it was compounded monthly. So what we have is the same APR, 6%, different compounding periods, quarterly, uh, annually, quarterly, monthly. Annually means just the interest is compounded at the end of the year, right? This is four times a year, this is 12 times a year, right? And they give us different amounts of interest at the end of the year. So what we need to do, of course, is go back to the bank and say, hey, you know, this whole APR thing isn't giving a full reflection of um, how much money we're getting on interest each year. We want, uh, we want you to just tell us, look, you know, what percentage of interest on our balance are we going to get at the end of the year? That's what we want to know. So don't tell us 6% compounded monthly. It's, it's kind of, yeah, okay, so it's you can think in your head, well, it's got to be a little bit more than 6% because it's compounded every month. But I mean, why can't you just tell me what percentage of interest will I get at the end of the year? Okay. And yes, and they should do that. And they do. And there's a lot to say they do anyway. But um, the point is, that's what the annual percentage yield is. The annual percentage yield tells you how much interest you're going to get at the end of the year. Okay. It doesn't tell you 6% compounded monthly. Because that, you know, you, you don't really know how much interest that will be. Um, you know how much it'll be at the end of one month, but not at the end of the year. So, the annual percentage yield is just like percentage change. Okay, so the annual percentage yield is the actual percentage return earned in one year. Let's write that down one time. When you write things down, it goes into your brain. That's where you want it. So writing, writing, writing is how you learn, learn, learn. Annual, look at me writing it. And I already know it. So you can do it too. Come on. <laughs> Annual percentage yield is the actual percentage return or the actual amount of interest you get at the end of one year. Or the actual percentage return, percentage interest, you could think, earned in one year. The actual percentage return earned in one year. How about the actual percentage interest? How about that? We could write, so if you want to write this way again, APY is the actual percentage of interest or percentage, okay, of interest earned in one year. How about that? Okay. Percentage return, percentage interest, same thing, right? So what the APY is, is it's just like a percentage change. Okay. Remember when we did percentage change and we got the increase or the, the decrease, the change the increase over the initial amount, right? And that's just what, what uh, APY is. 
Okay, and so, I mean, the increase in example five, of course, we started with $1,000, and at the end of the year, we ended up with 1060 so the change was 60 right? So if the increase was 16, we began with 1,000. Plug that in the calculator, what do you get? Or even better do it in your head. Divide top and bottom by 10, you got six over 100. 600 is what as a decimal? 0 0.06, which is 6%, okay? So the percentage change, or the annual percentage yield, uh, is 6%, for example, five, okay? What's the annual percentage yield for example eight? Um, so the APY, or which is just like percent change, percentage change, okay, is the the increase or the change over the initial amount. Just remember, you're doing it for a year, though. It's annual annual percentage yield okay so for for one whole year it's the increase over the initial amount right just like percentage change so if you look at example eight what did we begin with in year one what did we end with in year one what was the increase so example eight we invested a thousand so we began with a thousand right and at the end of year one we had a thousand and sixty one thirty six so the increase was the interest earned at the end of year one right the sixty one thirty six and the initial amount was the thousand. Write that as a decimal and a percentage. Press pause, write that as a decimal, and write that as a percentage. Okay, I hope you've done it. I'm going to do it now. If you put that in the calculator, you get 0 0.06136 as a percentage. That is, right, what is that as a percentage? Got to move the decimal point one, two spaces to the right to get 6.136%. So there's our APY. And press pause and do the same thing for example 9. Calculate the APY as a percentage for example 9. I remember in example 9. You began with a thousand dollars. At the end of year one, you have a thousand and sixty-one dollars sixty-eight cents. Okay, so calculate the increase over the initial amount for year one. I hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. So the APY is just like percentage change. It's the increase or the increase in interest. The increase of interest. Okay, over the initial amount in in one year, right? which is 61.68 over and we began with a thousand as a decimal that is press pause and write that as a decimal if you haven't done it yet you got that as a decimal 0 0.06168 now press pause and write that as a percentage you got that as a percentage gotta move this decimal point one two spaces to the right to get six point one six eight per cent that's our annual percentage yield or annual interest is all it is annual interest right the interest for the year six point one six eight per cent now what conclusions can we draw about APR and APY um, we've just looked at the same APR of 6% for um, different compounding periods, compounding annually, compounding quarterly, compounding monthly. And we got different annual percentage yields or, or total interest earned for the year, right? So what can you say, what's the difference between APR and APY? Um, how do they compare? How, how does the APY change when the number of compounding periods changes. So press pause and just jot down a couple of thoughts or just think a couple of thoughts. Press pause and think a couple of thoughts about you know what what is the difference between APR and APY and how does APY change when the periods uh, of compounding change. So press pause and just think about that and then we'll talk about it together. 
Okay, I hope you've uh, come up with something. Uh, one thing I think you'll agree with is that um, <clears throat> the APY, annual percentage yield, increases when we have more compounding periods per year. Does that make sense? Like compounding quarterly was four compoundings in the year, right? Four. Compounding monthly, that was 12 compoundings in the year, right? 12. So, um, the annual percentage yield um, increases when you have more compounding periods, right? When the compounding, the uh, when when the cost or the number of compoundings increase, right? This is when the number of compoundings increase, right? Uh, what else can we say about APY and APR? Well, they're the same if you just have annual compounding, that's for sure, right? They're the same. The annual percentage yield is the same thing as the APR uh, when, with, sorry, when, with annual compound interest when you compound annually okay uh, anything else can the APY ever be less than the annual percentage rate think about that one press pause think about it Oh, don't think so, huh? I mean, you can either compound once a year, or twice a year, semi-annually, or three times, or four times a year. That's quarterly, or twelve times a year, mostly. But you can't compound less than once a year, right? And when you compound just once a year, your annual percentage yield is the exact same thing as the APR. So um, we could also say that the annual percentage yield is um, well. It's never less than. How about that? That makes sense. Never less than the annual percentage rate. Okay. And anything else you want to say about the APY and the APR? Um, basically, the annual percentage rate doesn't really tell you how much interest you're going to have at the end of the year, right? The annual percentage yield tells you the exact percentage interest you will have at the end of the year. The annual percentage yield is the actual percentage of interest earned in one year. The APR can be misleading because you, I mean, he, how often is it compounded? You got to own that first and then you got to kind of work stuff out to figure out how much interest you're going to get at the end of the year, right? But the APY tells you that right away. So, Let's look at example 10. Assume a one-year certificate of deposit purchased for $2,000 pays an annual percentage rate of 7% that is compounded semi-annually. How much is in the account at the end of each compounding period? How much total interest does it earn? What's the annual percentage yield? If you like, press pause, do the entire question, check the answers on the video. Right? I'm going to do them step by step. Okay, I hope you, you can all means press pause and try it if you like. I'm going to start with the first question. How much is in the account at the end of each compounding period? Okay, so we're doing semi-annually. So uh, each compounding period would be six months, right? So the first compounding period would be at six months. And the second compounding period would be at 12 months. And then we make a little table, right? So here's compounding period, and then we look at the um, balance. We'll just look at the balance, right? So period one at the end of six months, they're going to give you the annual percentage rate is seven percent, okay? Um, but the whole trick is. This is compounded semi-annually. 
So remember from previous exercises, at the end of the first period, of course, you'll have your $2,000, but what will your interest be? Can you remember how to do that? You've got to watch out because we need to get semi annual interest. Okay, it's a special interest rate, which is equal to what? What's a semi annual interest rate? Well, it's the 7% divided by 2, or 0 0.07 divided by 2, right? Which is? Zero point zero three five, right? Or three and a half percent. So each period we get our two thousand dollars. Of course this is if you move this over two spaces that's three point five percent of course, right? So at the end of each period we get our two thousand dollars plus three point five percent of two thousand, right? Which is 2000 plus 0 0.035 times 2000, right? And uh, of course, uh, two ways to calculate this. We can um, just go ahead and get it. 2000 plus this times this gives 70 dollars. Right, so the balance would be 2070. Of course, you could pull the 2000 out and get 2000 times 1 plus 0 0.035, but I hope we've done this often enough to where we know how to do this, which would also be 2070, right? So, sorry, I'll just move this down here. The second period, which is 12 months. Um, what, how, what, how much money do we have at the second period? Press pause and do this one. Second period we have our $2,070 plus 3.5% of the 2,070, right? That's what was in the account after six months or after 12 months, we get, we still have that and we get interest on top of that too, right? So 2070 plus 0 0.035 times 2070, which of course is 2070 plus, you put that in your calculator, 0 0.035 times 2070, $72.45, right? Seventy two forty five. So that gives us two thousand one hundred forty two dollars forty five, right? Now, how much is in the account at the end of each compounding period? We've got that. At the end of the first compounding period, this much is in. At the end of the second one, this much is in, right? So this one is done. How much total interest does it earn? Press pause and do that. How much total interest does this account earn in the year? Because it's a one-year certificate of deposit. I promise you won't take the money out during the year. You'll pay a fee, if a fine if you do. It won't be worth your while. So you put the $2,000 in. I'm not going to touch that. At the end of the year, that's when it reaches maturity. Okay. And that's so. So how much total interest does it? does it earn? So at maturity, let's say. So you're familiar with that word. So have you got it? Have you pressed pause and tried it? Well, we started with 2000. We ended up with this. So if you subtract 2000, you've got $142.45, right? So total interest earned
would be $142.45. So we've got this one figured out. And now what's the annual percentage yield? Press pause and calculate the annual percentage yield. Remember how to do it? It is the total amount of interest you earned in the year, right? Interest earned in the year, or the increase. It's a percentage change is what it is. Increase in the account during the year over the initial amount. And the reason I like to do increase over initial is because that's what we did for percentage change and hopefully it'll help you remember how to do percentage change. So this again is just percentage change just like we did at the start of uh, uh, previously. Okay, so we've got increase over initial. So press pause and calculate that. So the increase amount was the total interest earned in the year, $142.45. The initial amount at the beginning of the year was $2,000. Just plug that in your calculator and you'll get a decimal. And there's your decimal, right? 0 0.071225. And um, write that as a percentage now, because you've got to give your annual percentage yield as a percentage. So you've got to move these at this decimal point one, two spaces to the right, okay? Giving us 7.1225 percent. Right, annual percentage yield. 7.1225 percent. Um, if you were asked to round that to the to to a percentage with two decimal places, what would you do? Just for fun, round that to a percentage with two decimal places. Have you got the answer? you would keep these two digits and the next digit is a two so you'd round down. So the annual percentage yield would be approximately 7.12 percent. Okay? So that's rounding, just for practice. Anyway, the point about this is the annual percentage rate of 7 percent again is kind of uh, kind of misleading because at the end of the year you don't get 7%, you get 7.12225%, right? And that's the point. So the annual percentage yield, um, because we're compounding more than just at the end of the year, we're compounding during the year. If we compound during the year at all, like semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, uh, any of those, your, your annual percentage yield will of course be more than the annual percentage rate, right?